So some of the things that has been very helpful for me as faculty working with behavioral health consultants is one, it's extremely important to be able to talk with the behavioral health consultant after the visit, not after clinic, because you're still formulating your patient's plan um, during that visit time. And so if I'm, if I'm seeing a patient and then you know, Dr. Beachy sees a patient afterwards, it's extremely helpful to have um, her come find me or me come find her and say, um, you know, okay, what do you think? What is exactly going on? Because I gain one from Dr. Vici, I gain that, you know, what is her perspective on what's going on with the patient? Um, and it helps me to formulate my plan. But then the other thing is, is that, which has been extremely invaluable, is that Dr. Vici will give me pointers of this is what we talked about and this is what I advised her to do. And so, like, for an example, um, the, the, um, uh, leaves on the stream is one of the things that she will do with patients and so I remember when I first I was like well what is that and so then she explained to me one of her techniques of, of working with patients to be able to calm them down and, and uh, um, alleviate some anxiety and so um, what's nice about learning techniques from the behavioral health consultants is that there are days that even though we have four in our clinic there is none in our clinic and you have that patient that you have 15 minutes with and you can tell that they are having anxiety right in front of you. And I can now say, okay, let me teach you something that you can do. And I remember the first time I did it and then I asked the patient afterwards how they felt. And they're like, oh, I feel so much better. And I was like, yes, because I learned something and, and I felt effective. And so um, it, it really is a team. And, and so by the behavioral health consultants coming and talking with me as a provider and me talking with them, I learn tricks about what they're doing. And then they also learn from me, you know, what is it I really need? What, what do I need from them to make um, my, my workflow go easier? And, and what really are the pieces of information that is helpful? Uh, the other thing that I think if you're developing a psychosocial um, curriculum would be helpful is to put the faculty through some of the exercises that the BHDs do with the patients. So that way you can put it into a little bit more perspective because again, how I, you know, with patients are like, well, I don't need to see a shrink. Um, it's, it's easier to explain to them, you know, what, what they're going to be doing rather than, yeah, they're going to sit you on a couch and they're going to, you know, get out the piece of paper. And, and I tell them that I'm like, well, you know, we're hiding it in the back. And so they'll <laughs> fill it on out for you. And I say, just kidding. You know, this, this is not, this is not a counseling session. This is, you know, let's figure out you know, what are your values and, and what is your barriers to having improved health? This is not a shrink that you're going to talk to. This is a person like you and me. This is another, you know, tool in your belt that you need to be able to improve your health. So those would probably be the two biggest things. Do you feel, um, you know, training the residents, do you think it would be more beneficial to train them and teach them interventions? Would it be more beneficial to uh, teach them like a philosophy? Or what do you think would be the most kind of um, beneficial thing to kind of focus on with I think residents? A, I think a mixture of both. I think, you know, starting with residency with Dr. Strassel, um, I was so bombarded by the amount of medical information I needed to know that the fluff was not important. Mm. And it's not really until you're in the mix of things and, and recognizing that, oh, we co-created a plan, but really I created a plan mm. because I never really found the foundation of what was wrong. And um, it, it is um, sometimes hard to establish that philosophy without really understanding the importance of why you need to have that. And so I think that um, you need to start bringing in little bits of pieces of the philosophy and then as they move through their second and third year it's really going to start hitting home as they start having the follow-up with the um, with their patients and seeing um, their outcomes i think starting early in terms of you know what are some of the interventions because i can remember i mean i was i was a faculty um, but when i was like oh you felt better it's it's um short rewards and uh, but it just it was really a, wonderful to see um, the small impact that you can have or um, it was it was really nice when I had another patient come back and I was like wow you look really great today and they're like leaves on the stream <laughs> I was like really and so I think that um, it's kind of a buy-in for interns right away of you know this stuff may seem like fluff but this actually works and and this is actually what patients need to be able to improve their lives.